guys and welcome back to another uh, tutorial today what we're going to be covering is something a little bit different than variables uh, variables I figure I'm going to be doing on Fridays uh, just because it's uh, a little bit more in-depth into uh, a little bit more logic stuff but I want to do some creative stuff as well so I thought I would uh, start working on some other projects on Mondays so the first thing that we're going to actually do today is uh, actually look at the model that we're going to be using in the uh, our project and this is a two scale boat um, it's an entity uh, we've used the um, modded entity uh, option to make our uh, entities like we usually do and uh, I've just used basically a I believe it's a 64 by 64 image you can you can scale this up as much as you need to by adjusting this this can go as high as you want I would try keeping it as uh, um, on a 8-bit scale so to uh, 128 would be the next scale up I think let me just see if my math is correct uh, 64 times 2 well, this 128 yeah that's what I figured okay so 128 and then it goes to 256 and then um, 512 as well so those are different aspect ratios that you can use uh, there's also 32 and uh, 16 obviously 16 is probably going to be too small for this type of project uh, but we've just basically used a uh, 64 for um, this project you're probably going to want to use at least 64 uh, just because we're going to be working with uh, 16 by 16 uh, cubes so each sections uh, these little blocks fit into a 16 by 16 block so what I mean by that is if we lower this all the way down as you can see this is our bottom grid and that's exactly 16 by 16 so one full block and what I've done is I've basically just uh, made smaller sections of the boat so I could style it as if I were to build it in Minecraft with real blocks. And the next thing that I need to point out is uh, the driver's seat. So if you wanted to make it look like your um, character is actually driving the boat, which is probably what most people want, uh, you're going to have to kind of do some math and figure out exactly where you want the um, character to sit on the altitude. But if we zoom in here, you can kind of see that the block, uh, this, the actual grid part, is sitting right uh, about half a block forward, or the boat's half a block back, so about a eight pixels that makes it look like the player is actually sitting a decent distance uh, in their seat rather than just right up against the back of the, the uh, seat here so that's just a tip for you uh, if you notice that the sitting position is a little bit off just move your model a little bit backwards and it should work out fine um, now this level right here is going to be the level that your boat's going to sit at. So what I've done is I've raised it up a one solid block. So when you're actually determining your um, your player position, uh, you have to take in consideration how many. So in our case, the block basically is uh, 1.5 because we also have that chair slab thing right here as well so this is one block right here from the actual grid so one solid block plus 0.5 so our height of our model will want to be 1.5 other than that um, when you go to your properties you should have something similar to this uh, make sure your model identifier is something unique and uh, that your file name is unique usually you can use these as your um, use as the same name so uh, yeah just basically do that and if you have different colors of boats uh, for the same type you can just do like red and set this to red as well so something like this like that and that would be valid so 
Uh, we're just going to keep it on fishing though because it's just a simple fishing boat and other than that just make sure to save your texture and uh, make sure to always back up your models so just click save and then save it onto your drive somewhere and um, other than that let's uh, hop into M Creator. I've already exported it you can basically export your model by clicking on this button right here export and then click on that and then you can save it as a Java file so let's hop into M Creator. actually before we hop into M Creator, I should probably uh, mention a couple things as well um, you're gonna get a lot of cubes in your model so it's probably a good way to actually start organizing I didn't actually organize this um, when I was designing it and it turns out you don't need to have different names for your cubes for entities so from working on my own mod for boats and stuff I've noticed that um, basically creating sections so this would be one section here that would be section 2, section 3, section 4 and so on all the way until you reach the end of your boat or at the front of your boat and then you just basically group them into their own bones. So bones are basically their folders. So you group anything in that folder uh, to a different folder, right? So it just helps organize it. And um, again, uh, it just comes down to making sure that you know what section you need and all that other stuff. And it's easier to add more content to that section too and keep it all organized. Uh, this particular model has 211 different uh, cubes, so it does get quite big when you're actually designing a project like this. Uh, just some extra tips for that. So now let's hop into M Creator. So I'm just going to discard that, and if we hop into the boat example, uh, what I've done is I have imported our uh, texture for other. So this basically goes to our um, GUI components, mobs, stuff like that. Uh, you can import your uh, other textures right here and then select your texture. And you wanna import a Java entity uh, or Java model here. And that's what. So now that we have that out of the way, um, for the entity settings, what I've done is I've used our model, I've created the name for the model, I've used our newly imported texture. Um, you can set up this um, color, egg color if you want to. I've noticed that currently if you disable it, it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't actually disable it. Uh, you can set the tab if you want to. Uh, for the this particular boat I've used um, for the hurt sound and death sound uh, as a block would hit. Uh, you can change it to any other sound if you want, especially if you have custom sounds. Uh, now for the type of uh, characteristics, I've set it to creature. Um, the creature type is undefined and the entity health and experience. You might want to set your experience to zero. Uh, entity health uh, this is going to be half hearts so you can set this to 20 and that will be 10 hearts full hearts uh, movement speed this is actually going to matter on how fast you want your boat to go um, now tracking range I would leave this at 64 uh, it's not really going to be used in our particular model but uh, that's fine uh, but yeah, your speed, if you want it to go faster, then you can increase it to 2 or something. If you want it to go slower, you can go like 1 point or 0 0.1 or something like that. I'm just going to leave it at 1. And uh, drop, you don't really need a drop per se. You can configure that through procedures if you want to. Um, and then you can uh, set the immunity and I would suggest the attack strength and armor protection to set that to 0. And yeah, I just have uh, drowning enabled to basically uh, not allow it to take damage. You can set that how. Now to uh, basically control your mob, what you're gonna want to do is uh, enable riding and forward movement. Uh, you could technically um, enable the last one here, a uh, stirf uh, movement, which is the side to side movement. Not but uh, it's not so much realistic for boats per se. 
So I've only done the forward and backwards um, movement and making it rideable. Now, uh, you don't need these other two settings. You don't really need it to fly or swim in water. I haven't tested it with the water one, but um, I know that uh, the current setup. Now, I should probably hop back here because I totally forgot about this. Um, I would suggest leaving your um, your setting for the width to 0 0.5. Uh, if you go any bigger than that, uh, it might run into making the boat a lot slower or just have run, run into many other issues. Uh, Kelman was a big help at helping me figure out what was causing the uh, boat not to basically move and the character wasn't able to control it for some reason and that was due to the uh, the size of the entity so this is one solid block I know it says 0 0.5 but that's in a radius so um, 0 0.5 times 2 is 1 and that's a solid block so the other section here is our height this is where you're going to be offsetting the player's uh, sitting position um, now remember that we had to set it off at 1.5 because of the the chair itself so this is set to 1.5 all right, let's move over to particles. I did not add any particles uh, procedures. Uh, this procedure basically helps us, um, well, we don't really need, we just need this part right here. Uh, when basically is entity being written and equal to true, then we're going to add a potion effect. And this is gonna help with the uh, movement in the water. And then we're gonna set this to uh, probably one is just fine or you could set this to zero in all technicality uh, zero is actually level one potions one is level two and so on so we need dolphin grace and this helps uh, the boat actually glide in the water a lot smoother than you know if it was how regular entities work like basically function when they're swimming in water they kind of are a lot choppier and uh, slower so this basically fixes that issue so we're just going to save that and that's going to be under the entity update tick and uh, one thing that you might want to actually do is set your duration to one uh, Kelman said that um, basically uh, having it set to one on the update takes is for potion effects and stuff are always uh, improves performance and stuff so you might want to do that it's not really necessary to set it anything higher than that because uh, it's happening every tick anyways so this is one tick and then it's updating every one tick so that's constantly updating the procedure so that's fine and the last thing that we need to do is remove all the uh, startup um, AI tasks and just add the swimming when in water uh, or swim when in water and that's all you need to do for your AI and uh, disable your uh, spawning because we're actually going to be using um, basically the spawn egg to uh, generate it. You can actually add your custom textures if you want to too. I'll, look, I'll do a sh quick showcase what I did for that and that's all you need to do. So um, I'll actually hop into a different world now and show you what I've basically done with my own mod. Uh, it's basically the same thing, it's just um, it uses a custom item, but uh, before I do that, uh, what I'm going to do is just quickly show you this particular model, and uh, then you guys can see that everything works fine. Okay, so our model's uh, here. Uh, we can basically place down the spawn egg, and it will uh, spawn a boat in, and as you can see, it's to scale. Um, and if you click right on the driver's seat area right here, you can actually take control of it and you can drive around like you would normally basically ride an entity. So like I can't show a further uh, display of actually riding it, but you get the idea. And um, it's just like a regular entity. So if you were to want to uh, hook up a lead, if it gets stuck or something, then that's possible too. I'm not sure where leads are. There we go. So if we hook up a lead to it, uh, we can actually drag it along and it just acts just basically like a regular entity. So even fishing rods would uh, work on it as well. I really suck it. But yeah, you kind of get the idea. So 
Uh, let's hop into my other world and I'll show you uh, basically what I've done for uh, items and some extra code that uh, makes it a little bit better. All right, so the code that I've used for the entity, I have a little script here for when the entity dies, I have it to drop an item. Um, this basically gets linked to the procedure, Whoop, passed it, uh, when entity dies. Uh, so basically when the entity dies, it will drop the uh, custom spawn egg for players to be able to craft. And the other procedure that I have is just a little bit altered um, this is uh, basically the procedure to test um, for when the item for the item when it's actually right clicked in the air. So basically, what it do is it tests for that particular item, and then it will um, uh, spawn the particular boat that I want, and then it will remove the item. Um, so that's basically the other procedure, and. That's linked to the item itself, which is here. Uh, basic properties for a regular item, and then it's just uh, when right-clicked on air, uh, player location. And the last thing, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, forget what I called it, actually. It's somewhere in here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Just give me a sec, I'll try to find it. All right, so speedboat, uh, this is basically the procedure I'm using for uh, testing if the entity is in water. And uh, thanks to Golder Ion, um, he's been very helpful with uh, actually figuring out how to set up the dolphin grace and stuff like that to target just the water. And what I've basically done here is uh, tested for uh, flowing water uh, water, flowing water, and water bubbles, and uh, I've applied Dolphin Grace if it finds either one of these in the entity's current location, and if there is um, not anything there, then I've basically set it to um, just put it in a cobweb. Now one thing that I have noticed if you're doing it this way is you might want to add an extra if statement and uh, target kelp as well because it, when kelp actually grows it's just below the surface there so it does obstruct the um, the actual uh, what do you call it the driving it does slow down because it's technically a different block so I would just um, use uh, kelp plant right here and probably add some of the other different um, sea seaweed and stuff like that and just add Dolphin Grace onto it because you'll be finding that your boat slows down in the update tick when that all happens. But other than that, it works fine. And this again is linked to your uh, entity's um, procedure for your update tick. So right here, as you can see, that's where it's located. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and click the silver bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.